December 1st, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Hosea chapters 4 through 6 of the Old Testament. Hear the word of the Lord, you Israelites, for the Lord has a covenant lawsuit against the people of Israel. For there is neither faithfulness nor loyalty in the land, nor do they acknowledge God. There is only cursing, lying, murder, stealing, and adultery. They resort to violence and bloodshed. Therefore the land will mourn and all its inhabitants will perish. The wild animals, the birds of the sky, and even the fish in the sea will perish. Do not let anyone accuse or contend against anyone else, for my case is against you priests. You stumble day and night and the false prophets stumble with you. You have destroyed your own people. You have destroyed my people by failing to acknowledge me. Because you refuse to acknowledge me, I will reject you as my priest. Because you reject the law of your God, I will reject your descendants. The more the priest increased in numbers, the more they rebelled against me. They have turned their glorious calling into a shameful disgrace. They feed on the sin offerings of my people. Their appetites long for their iniquity. I will deal with the people and priests together. I will punish them both for their ways, and I will repay them for their deeds. They will eat, but not be satisfied. They will engage in prostitution, but not increase in numbers, because they have abandoned the Lord by pursuing other gods. Old and new wine take away the understanding of my people. They consult their wooden idols, and their diviner's staff answers with an oracle. The wind of prostitution blows them astray. They commit spiritual adultery against their God. They sacrifice on the mountaintops and burn offerings on the hills. They sacrifice under oak, poplar, and terebinth because their shade is so pleasant. As a result, your daughters have become cult prostitutes and your daughters-in-law commit adultery. I will not punish your daughters when they commit prostitution nor your daughters-in-law when they commit adultery. For the men consort with harlots. They sacrifice with temple prostitutes. It is true, a people that lacks understanding will come to ruin. Although you, O Israel, commit adultery, do not let Judah become guilty. Do not journey to Gilgal. Do not go up to Beth Avon. Do not swear as surely as the Lord lives. Israel has rebelled like a stubborn heifer. Soon the Lord will put them out to pasture like a lamb in a broad field. Ephraim has attached himself to idols. Do not go near him. They consume their alcohol, then engage in cult prostitution. They dearly love their shameful behavior. A whirlwind has wrapped them in its wings. They will be brought to shame because of their idolatrous worship. Hear this, you priests. Pay attention, you Israelites. Listen closely, O king, for judgment is about to overtake you. For you were like a trap to Mizpah, like a net spread out to catch Tabor. Those who revolt are knee-deep in slaughter, but I will discipline them all. I know Ephraim all too well. The evil of Israel is not hidden from me. For you have engaged in prostitution, O Ephraim. Israel has defiled itself. Their wicked deeds do not allow them to return to their God, because a spirit of idolatry controls their heart, and they do not acknowledge the Lord. The arrogance of Israel testifies against it. Israel and Ephraim will be overthrown because of their iniquity. Even Judah will be brought down with them. Although they bring their flocks and herds to seek the favor of the Lord, they will not find him. He has withdrawn himself from them. They have committed treason against the Lord because they bore illegitimate children. Soon the new moon festival will devour them and their fields. Blow the ram's horn in Gibeah, sound the trumpet in Ramah, sound the alarm in beth Aven. Tremble in fear, O Benjamin. Ephraim will be ruined in the days of judgment. What I am declaring to the tribes of Israel will certainly take place. The princes of Judah are like those who move boundary markers. I will pour out my rage on them like a torrential flood. Ephraim will be oppressed, crushed under judgment because he was determined to pursue worthless idols. 
I will be like a moth to Ephraim, like wood rot to the house of Judah. When Ephraim saw his sickness and Judah saw his wound, then Ephraim turned to Assyria and begged its great king for help, but he will not be able to heal you. He cannot cure your wound. I will be like a lion to Ephraim, like a young lion to the house of Judah. I myself will tear them to pieces and I will carry them off and no one will be able to rescue them. Then I will return again to my lair until they have suffered their punishment. Then they will seek me. In their distress, they will earnestly seek me. Come on, let's return to the Lord. He himself has torn us to pieces, but he will heal us. He has injured us, but he will bandage our wounds. He will restore us in a very short time. He will heal us in a little while so that we may live in his presence. So let us acknowledge him. Let us seek to acknowledge the Lord. He will come to our rescue as certainly as the appearance of the dawn, as certainly as the winter rain comes, as certainly as the spring rain that waters the land. What am I going to do with you, O Ephraim? What am I going to do with you, O Judah? For your faithfulness is as fleeting as the morning mist. It disappears as quickly as dawns do. Therefore, I will certainly cut you into pieces at the hands of the prophets. I will certainly kill you in fulfillment of my oracles of judgment. For my judgment will come forth like the light of the dawn. For I delight in faithfulness, not simply in sacrifice. I delight in acknowledging God, not simply in a whole burnt offerings. At Adam they broke the covenant. Oh, how they were unfaithful to me. Gilead is a city full of evildoers. Its streets are stained with bloody footprints. The company of priests is like a gang of robbers lying in ambush to pounce on a victim. They commit murder on the road to Shechem. They have done heinous crimes. I have seen a disgusting thing in the temple of Israel. There Ephraim practices temple prostitution, and Judah defiles itself. I have appointed a time to reap judgment for you also, O Judah whenever I want to restore the fortunes of my people. God, I think I'm going to be on my soapbox for a few moments. I'm really tired of, especially Christians, saying, we shouldn't do any of that. We should just love people. Ah, and, and granted, love, very important. You're pretty clear about that in the Bible, very clear. But I swear, some people are going to love people to hell. They're going to love them so much that there is no sense of true love, of unselfish love, of telling them what they actually need to do, what they need to change in their lives to get to heaven. I, I think too often people expect you to be only the God of the New Testament, only filled with love. And I think... I think the love of the world gets confused with the love that you have for us. You loved Israel and Judah so much that you are willing to put their lives not only on hold, but also uh, allow them to be basically wasting away, as you put it uh, in this uh, couple chapters of Hosea. Ephraim or Israel, which is what he's really referring to when it says, I will be like a moth to Ephraim, like wood rot to the house of Judah. You not only have removed your blessings from your chosen people, but you say, I will be like a moth to Ephraim. I will be like wood rot. I will allow you to waste away because you keep pursuing worthless idols. You keep pursuing everything that goes against what I have taught you. You keep pursuing everything that goes against everything I want for you. You've got your daughters working as cult prostitutes. Uh, you've got temples that are now for idols, uh, for Baal. Uh, you're sacrificing your children to these idols, to these other deities. And then when, when Israel or Ephraim and uh, Judah saw that they were sick, they were wounded, as, as it says in Hosea. Instead of turning to you, God, they turned to Assyria and says, Hey, we'll, pr we'll pay tribute to you. Will you help us out? God, there is such a huge difference between removing your blessing and allowing someone to waste away because they keep choosing to have a sinful life 
versus persecution of your saints worlds apart but interestingly enough the basis for both of them still comes from your love that you have for us you're willing to put discipline upon Israel and Judah or Ephraim and Judah to the point that they eventually will return to you uh, reconciling in a relationship with you the same thing for your saints we're persecuted and you allow that to happen out of love because you want to strengthen us uh, to allow us to have endurance for the trials that will come you can never go and be a disciple who makes disciples if you don't have that endurance to be in a myriad of situations so god i just pray for everyone today who's in either situation if they are not of the vine if they're away from you and if they're wounded and sick and hurting god i just pray that they turn to you that they find that comfort and that healing in you and in you alone that they won't find that comfort that fulfillment in sex in jobs in money in drugs in alcohol it is only through you that we are completely fulfilled in who we should be and god i pray for the people who are under persecution who are under attack right now for being your children god if they're being bullied online all the way up to threat of death whatever that looks like based upon your will and your timing i just ask that you be with them and if they are to be rescued from those situations god i just ask for that to happen if they are to go through those situations so that they can learn whatever it is that you need them to learn god i just ask that you provide them the strength that you've promised us empower them to have the desire to do what pleases you and if what pleases you is for them to go through that persecution then help them strengthen them surround them with people who can help encourage and support them you are a god of love we just have to get our version of what love means straight and it's not this worldly love that we keep spouting about especially in social media to love everyone yes we are called to love everyone but not in a way that loves them to the point that they don't understand the incredible power of who you are god your sovereignty your forgiveness your grace and your mercy god thank you for being my sovereign god of love my king of kings of love i pray all this in your son's name amen <music>